Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to check out a new item designed specifically for recording sound on DSLR video shoots. This is the DCR302 from Fostex, a three-channel audio mixer and stereo recorder all in one. This small, lightweight device solves a number of audio issues that face the DSLR video maker. So let's take a look and give it a little test run recording the audio from my lav mic. DSLR video shooters face a number of problems to deal with on the audio side. The camera's built-in microphone is less than stellar and it's often too far away from your sound source. So one of the first upgrades is often at least one external microphone. The camera will usually have a mic input, but it's often a mini jack. So if you want to use an XLR microphone like this lav mic or many professional shotgun mics, you can't plug it directly into the camera. Also, what if you want to use two or three mics? Well, that's a problem since the camera only has one mic input. Beyond that, the camera's microphone preamp is not very good. So you often get a lot of noise along with your audio, especially if you don't disable the automatic gain control. In addition, many DSLRs don't have a headphone jack, so that makes it kind of difficult to hear what's actually being recorded. Now enter the Fostex DCR302, which not only solves those issues, but has some additional benefits as well. Now, first of all, the size and form factor is very much in line with smaller DSLR rigs. The solid metal chassis feels sturdy, very well built, and weighs just slightly over a pound and a half without batteries. On the bottom are three quarter 20 threads to choose from, allowing you to mount it to a tripod, while on the top are two threads for the included detachable bracket that allows you to mount your camera to the box. The unit is powered by four AA batteries. Fostex indicates approximately four hours of operation time with NIMH batteries, or you can separately purchase an AC to DC adapter that outputs anywhere from 9 volts to 24 volts. The unit records stereo files to SD or SDHC cards, and the card slot is right here beside the battery compartment. On the side of the DCR302 are three locking XLR inputs that can accommodate either mic or line signals. Directly above are three switches that allow you to individually activate 48 volts phantom power if your microphone requires it. Just around the corner are where we make adjustments on the inputs. The four position slider can be set all the way to the left for line level signals, or for mic inputs you can choose between three input level options, low, medium, and you guessed it, high. Right below that is a trim pot for finer level adjustments. If your input's too hot, the peak light will light up, indicating you might want to turn the input down a bit. The inputs all feature a limiter to help keep sudden loud sounds from clipping, and there's a green LED that lights up when it kicks in. Now, if your LED is lighting up a lot, turn your input levels down a bit. You can check your levels on the backlit LCD screen, which also doubles as a display for various menus and functions. This top switch introduces a high-pass filter. This can help reduce wind and mechanical noise, and the filter can be set to cut frequencies below either 80 or up to 200 hertz, or disengaged entirely. At the bottom is a pan switch, offering left, right, and center options. So in the real world, this allows us to plug in two mics, say two labs on two interview subjects, and pan one mic to the left channel and one to the right channel, allowing us to adjust the mix between them later in post. Now alternately, you could add a third mic, like a shotgun for ambience or backup. The DCR302 is a three-channel mixer, but it records in stereo, so you'll have to mix your three sources down to a stereo file. With two labs and a shotgun, you'd probably be wise to pan both labs to one channel and the shotgun to your other channel, since the close mic sound of the two labs should be fairly similar, while the shotgun is going to give you a little more ambience, so you might be better off by itself. For this shoot, I just need one lav since it's just me, so I put that on the right and I put the NTG1 shotgun mic overhead is on the left channel as a backup. We've been hearing the lav, but now I'm playing the shotgun channel back so you can hear how that sounds. Obviously with the shotgun a little further away, you get a little bit more of the ambience of the room, but still very nice clean recording from the DCR302. And I'll switch back to the lav channel again for you. Now the audio you're hearing was recorded at 24-bit 48 kilohertz, but the DCR302 will record WAV files at rates from 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz 
up to 24-bit 96 kilohertz. When you hit record, this bright LED lights up red. By the inputs, we see a mini jack labeled mic out. This allows me to send a mic level feed from the DCR302 directly to the mic input of our DSLR camera for a second recording that I can use as a backup or as a guide to sync the sound later in post. Syncing the sound is made easier by the optional slate tone that I can set to slate automatically when I start recording or when I stop or both. This feature could be really helpful if you often forget to slate when you shoot. Now, speaking of forgetfulness, one problem shooters have occasionally on a dual system setup like this is remembering to hit the record button on both your camera and your audio recorder. And the DCR302 helps solve this issue by allowing you to send an infrared signal to your camera that will start the camera recording when you hit record on the audio recorder. Now obviously your camera has to have an infrared sensor for that to work. We tested it with a Canon 5D Mark II and as you can see it worked very well once we turned the infrared function in the camera on. Right now, the 5D Mark II is the only camera that works with the DCR302's infrared triggering, but the folks at Fostex are working on expanding the infrared to work with additional models down the road. I should also point out that you can plug in a shutter remote like this Velo RSP12 and use that to trigger recording. If you prefer wireless operation, Velo also makes a wireless remote called the FreeWave. Just make sure the remote is Panasonic compatible and you should be good to go. In terms of monitoring, there are unbalanced RCA left and right outputs on the side, but most of your monitoring will probably be done from the 8th inch headphone jack. The volume knob is right here beside your meters. You can choose to monitor the left, right, or stereo channels, and if your DSLR actually has a headphone jack, like the Canon 5D Mark III, for example, you can plug the output from that into this return jack, and now you can monitor the output of your camera from the DCR302 as well. It's very convenient for quickly checking your in-camera backup recording at the flick of a switch. When you play back files, the LED glows bright green. One final feature to mention is the USB port on the side, which will allow you to transfer files to your Mac or PC and allow you to record directly to the computer if you'd like. We did a little test recording on a MacBook Pro using Logic and it worked very nicely. So hopefully that gives you a reasonable overview of what the Fostex DCR302 brings to the table. A three channel mixer and stereo recorder designed to seamlessly integrate with your DSLR rig and vastly improve your audio capture. I'm Rob from B&H and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.